By adding government expenditure into this equation, if government expenditure is greater than taxes, we can shift that curve upwards. Because government expenditure will once again increase this intercept, and so it will shift it even further. So you can increase the value of your equilibrium output. And the value of your aggregate expenditure will also increase. OK. Now, the leakages in the system must always equal the injections. So before, when we just had consumption investment, we saw that savings, or the leakage, must be equal to injections, which is, was investment. In this case, this is the complete model. This is what all you'll need to know. The leakages, which are savings plus imports, seeing as you minusing imports because Xn is equal to X minus M. So you minus imports, so it's a leakage, plus taxes, since you minus taxes. So these are all your leakages. They must be equal to your investment, which is an input uh, injection, plus your government spending, plus your export. So in equilibrium, this must hold. Your injections must be equal to your leakages. Now we're going to have a look at two types of problems with this analysis. Let's have a look at, firstly at a recessionary gap. A recessionary gap is where the aggregate expenditure is lower than the aggregate expenditure that should be occurring if the economy was at full employment. Remember, at full employment, there is no cyclical unemployment. There is only some frictional and structural unemployment. And you're creating the potential GDP that your country can. So that's your 45 degree line. Let's say that's your aggregate expenditure. This is your actual aggregate expenditure. But your potential output is there. YP. That's your potential GDP. However, here is your actual GDP, YA. So you can see that your aggregate expenditure of actual is a lot lower than your aggregate expenditure or your potential aggregate expenditure. So this gap, this vertical distance, gives you the recessionary gap. That vertical distance gives you the recessionary gap between A and P, the actual output and potential output. So this is the full employment output when you're using all your resources and you got your potential GDP. The vertical distance, if that is, say, 5 million in 5 million rand between your actual output and your potential output, the vertical distance is 5 million, you need to times that by the multiplier to get the change in output of 20 million, if, say, your multiplier was 4. So if this was 5 million, the actual difference, but the difference here is 20 million, you would have to increase that by 5 million times by a multiplier of 4 to get the actual difference of 20 million in the difference in your output. So this is a recessionary gap. And now we're going to have a look at an inflationary gap. An inflationary gap is exactly the opposite. You will have your actual aggregate expenditure leading to an output that's greater than your full employment output. So if you've got your 45 degree line, that's your aggregate expenditure actual. And this is your potential aggregate expenditure. Now, don't get confused if we say that that is the full employment aggregate expenditure. If that's the full employment aggregate expenditure, it's just saying that we've got our potential GDP with no cyclical unemployment. Remember, we said that there was still frictional unemployment and structural unemployment. So you can actually have expenditure, aggregate expenditure, which is greater than your um, potential aggregate expenditure and your potential output. So that's your potential output, your full employment output. Your aggregate expenditure at full employment could give you an output that's greater than your potential output. But this can happen as they increase the amount of people being employed in the economy. Do you think that's very likely that an economy is going to easily go above potential um, GDP? No, it's not. Because the resources, all your resources are being used in potential GDP, and suddenly the businesses are being stretched to the maximum in their excess capacity utilization.
So they're going to be using as much resources as, as possible, and they're not going to be able to supply as much as people would want. So it's going to be inflationary. There's not going to be enough goods, and there's going to be too much demand for the goods, and it's going to result in demand pull inflation, which we covered. So the nominal GDP is going to increase by a large amount as a result of the inflation, and you're going to have demand pull inflation. And the inflationary gap is the distance between these two graphs, between these two aggregate expenditure lines. So the aggregate expenditure at full employment will give you this full employment potential output of Y, whereas your actual employment, if your aggregate expenditure is too high, if there's excess aggregate expenditure, will be greater than your full employment GDP. And the inflationary gap is the distance between these two, and you would need to try and restrict aggregate expenditure, perhaps decrease government spending, so as to get this point back down below so that you can get your actual potential GDP equilibrium.